to part three of the toilet training series. In this segment, we're going to be discussing how do I know when I, as the parent, am ready to start the toilet training process? And the answer to that is twofold. Number one, I want to know, do I believe that my child can do this? And number two, I want to feel that I am ready to show patience and support to my child going through the process. And why are these two points so important and how are they connected? Well, in order to understand the answer to that, we have to look at what are some of the underlying dynamics going on during toilet training. So first of all, according to Eric Erickson, who is a preeminent um, figure in psychology, he discusses how throughout childhood there are different stages. During the years between ages two and five, the stage is called autonomy versus shame and doubt, which means that either the child can resolve the stage with a sense of autonomy, independence, feeling I can do things, or they can come out of the stage with the feeling of shame or doubt. So shame being, mm, I can't do things, and feeling really bad about that, or doubt, Mm, can I do things? I'm not really sure. Obviously, when we talk about what we would like for our children and a healthy resolution of this stage, we're talking about autonomy for the most part. So you might hear actually children in this age bracket very often saying, I do it, I can do. And that's because this is actually very healthy. It's helping them get to that resolution it's helping them come to the place where they can say, I can do. And this actually transitions them between the stage of babyhood, which was zero to two when they were really babies, to when they're going to be six and they're going to be starting school, real school, and they're going to be in childhood. So this is the transition between babyhood and childhood. They're still kind of babies between age two and five, but they're transitioning away from babyhood and they need to feel I can do. During babyhood, we're doing everything for them. And here's what we want to understand now. In the toilet training process, this is why it's so important that I enter it with a belief that you can do it. You, my child, can do this. Because Basically, what we want is for the child to achieve independence in being toilet trained. And if you understand that toilet training is the single greatest physical accomplishment between the ages of two and five, we can see even more why this is so important. Because if the whole stage is about figuring out whether or not they are autonomous or full of shame and doubt. And this is the single greatest physical accomplishment. Wow, this becomes much more weighty. And I believe it's also the reason why I get so many questions on toilet training. It becomes a very big point for struggle when there, there is that doubt, when there is that um, not really sure on the parents part can you do it so it really does become a point for that struggle and what i want to say here is before we start the process let's be sure that we feel yes i believe my child can do it and if you think about what that means that my child is going to be toilet trained it means in order for him to really be considered fully trained that he listens to his own body, responds to when he feels that his bladder or bowel is full by taking himself to the bathroom, and that would be called being trained. What happens when I don't fully believe that my child can do this? So. Generally, what we'll see is that a parent will be extra nervous about accidents, right? If I'm not really sure if my child can do this and get to the bathroom when his body says so, ah, 
I'm very nervous, he's gonna have an accident. And I'll also very likely nag, um, beg, plead, offer very big rewards. Uh, sometimes parents ask me about that. Can I give my child something very big? Is that a good idea? And I'll say, mm, no. Generally, I would not recommend offering a very large prize. And that's because it's very clear when we do that, that we don't truly believe that they can do it because it's not proportionate. A child naturally is able to go and take themselves to the bathroom. It, we're not asking, even though I discussed in part one, the list of things they have to accomplish in order for them to be successful. It's a natural part of childhood. We're not asking them for something that big. So therefore, when I offer them a humongous prize in order to do it, what I'm really saying is, I don't think you can really do this. So I'm gonna to try to come up with something so big to kind of persuade you. And that sends the message that sort of is the reverse of what we really wanna be accomplishing in toilet training, which is you can do this. You can be successful and you can do it on your own. Now, the interesting thing is that when I don't feel that my child can do this, or I don't fully believe that my child can do this, then what happens is I actually get angry when he doesn't take on the responsibility, and parents will say to me, but my child doesn't care, and he'll have accidents. And usually, the reason why that happens is not because the child doesn't care, but because you actually didn't let go as a parent to give over the responsibility. And so the child kind of says when he has accidents, well, it's not really up to me anyway, and I'm not being allowed to take responsibility. So he doesn't. So all of this, the idea of, you know, if I nag and if I beg and if I use big prizes and I really don't believe 100% that he can do this, it makes the process much, much harder. And we'll see that it takes longer. So therefore, that's why I say first, before we start it, let's look, let's decide, do I truly believe that my child can do this? Because if I do, it will go smoother, it will take a shorter amount of time, and we'll give space to the child to take that responsibility that he needs to in order to be trained. And when I feel ready to show patience and support, then obviously I'm also going to be helping the process as opposed to making it more difficult. So tune into part four of the toilet training series where we'll discuss all about when should I not start toilet training. And in this way, we're gonna really help ourselves figure out when we really are ready.